Yes, so this is my server uh, and beside it it's new guts which we're going to be putting in today. Uh, this thing has been incredibly reliable, in fact it hasn't had a single technical issue uh, since I got it which is absolutely astounding considering the fact that it's been operating 24-7 for so many years. But alas, the time has come for that to change. Let's say, uh, figured we'd have a bit of a quick look inside before we actually get to putting the new fun stuff inside because this thing hasn't been cleaned out for the better part of a year but as all other things I own it's stuffed full of old socks and old pants and of course old hardware let's see ah. there we go yeah that's that's reasonably dirty. Oh, that is reasonably dirty indeed. That's a bit of a miracle. This cooler, an OCZ something or the other, and it's still running the original bloody fan from 2008. And this thing was in pretty much 24-7 duty prior to my ownership of it, and it's still going strong. <sighs> well, yeah, let's get some of that crud out of there. Oh, yes, a year's worth of unfiltered shit out of the air. This thing obviously doesn't have any dust filters. We well, have upgraded this painted by quite drastically and we're going to be doing some maintenance on this as well because I like it. Okay, much better. So, one of the things I've been going for really hard with this server is power efficiency. That's why we have a, for the time, quite efficient 80 plus bronze power supply rated for, I think it's just 300 watts. Uh, so, I'm quite curious to see how much power the old hardware uses as compared to the new stuff. Uh, keeping in mind that we're looking at 5 to 8 times more power uh, as far as computing goes. There's also hardware which is uh, almost 10 years newer than the stuff that's in here now. So, let's just power this on and see how she goes. I do recall this computer drawing about 40 watts when just sitting idle. Uh, with a drive spinning and with CPU doing nothing. But I could be mistaken. One thing to note about this computer, it actually doesn't have a graphics card at all. It has nothing integrated in the motherboard and it has nothing uh, additional installed. So uh, this has been an entirely blind machine. You would have to take it apart and install a graphics card in order to actually configure the BIOS, for instance. Uh, otherwise, it's just... Uh, network access only and when it comes to hardware this old you actually save like 10 to 15 watts of power by just not having a graphics card at all and there we go i do believe it's finished booting and we're looking at a power draw of 34 watts and that's all inclusive so that's actually a bit better than i expected or rather remembered so that's the benchmark to beat and i'm not sure if the new stuff is going to match that actually and we'll find out Another quite important thing to me about this computer is that it's built to be very, very quiet. Uh, that's why we have a gentle typhoon fan mounted on Robert Gromis and this thing uh, actually running a piece of special software for this motherboard which enables it to turn at a very low speed. That's below a thousand RPM and even if we shove a microphone right next to it there's not a lot of noise to be heard. Uh, neither for the drives, since everything's so well dampened right here, and these are 5900 RPM drives. It's just built to be a very quiet computer. Except, of course, for a power switch. Rather right, than just for shits and giggles, I decided to run performance tests on the old server prior to decommissioning it. And what was that? A peak of 73 watts? So that's the loaded power consumption to beat. And the score to beat. 1,957 points. I'm not joking when I say that all my stuff is full of old socks. Before we get into any of the actual computery, hardware -y stuff, I do distinctly recall leaving a few TPO caps in this thing in order to run them down since they weren't very critical. And I figured, yep, that's one. I figured we'd just replace those prior to putting this thing back in duty because they've run for a fair number of years and they should be getting 
a bit tired by now. Hey, she comes. Let's see what she measures at. It's a 2200 uh, 6.3 volts, by the way, so real low voltage, real unreliable. But you know, that's actually just fine. This little TP, it's, it's gone quite well. It hasn't died, despite having been in use for several years. Although perhaps it's in parallel with some of the more expensive caps, so it doesn't have to take as much of a grunt of a load. Either way, she's going down now. Right, I had to do a bit of remodeling around there in order to fit my only suitable replacement, which is a 25 volt cap, but I do believe we should stand a chance. Ah, hey, good enough for me. There we go. To quote a YouTuber much more famous than yours truly, this should now chooch. And if you're curious as to the specifics of this page apply, the model is uh, an FSP350-60GHN85. And if you're wondering what all this is about, well, I figured some time ago that since my service on 24-7, it uses well under 100 watts setting, uh, I might as well just put some power blocks on the back of the power supply and suck some power out of it. Uh, and uh, this is used to run various lights and uh, little gizmos around the workshop, just uh, saving up on uh, uh, pointless little tiny switching power supplies, because this thing is going to be a lot more efficient than most of the cheaper switches you get. To name a couple of things it runs, it runs the network switch, which uh, is probably off right now, and it runs the uh, light in my component storage. Alright, so with the power supply done, all we need to figure out now is how to cool the CPU, uh, because I have no plans whatsoever on using this uh, Rajin Tech sleeve bearing Ching Chong Chinese fan which came with a cooler. So I did a bit of a digging around and uh, if you've seen my video on uh, the free uh, Fujitsu Siemens uh, computer fixed a while ago, uh, they s seem to come with these really weird uh, Cooler Master branded fans uh, which are actually deltas and these run super quiet. So I figured I'd use one of these because these are dual ball bearing you know, rated for 70,000 hours by the Delta uh, spec sheet. So I think these are going to be excellent reliability fans and above all they are well, they're, they're more quiet actually than the original fan and definitely more quiet than my standard issue super duper mega server fans I use for everything. So this is going on there, I'm just hoping that this ridiculous short cord is going to be long enough, but we'll figure that out. If we need to change it, we'll just solder a new one on. Well, that's annoying. The screw holes aren't standard. That is weird. It's an 92mm fan, but the screws are like... 85, perhaps? Oh, that is weird. Oh, well, there are ways around it. All right, let's see. My plan is to just uh, uh, kind of stretch these rubbery things. It might work because they're very soft. We'll just poke them in there. Use pure violence. Ah, yeah. That's just fine. That is just fine. So the grade hardware. In fact, this mounting method almost becomes preferable to to the original because because now because the mains are getting pulled towards the center of the cooler, they're actually going in between the fins, uh, preventing the fan from moving up and down. Whereas uh, if it's mounted properly, uh, the fan would actually be free to move up and down. And these tracks, not that I think it's a major issue since there's a fair amount of friction, but there really would be nothing there to stop that from happening. And out comes the old one. Oh, to reference an ancient joke though, the motherboard tray is removable. And there we have it. Out at last, after five years of very faithful duty, good old GA EP45 DS3R.
You may rest among the motherboards in motherboard heaven. Well, shit. That is one of the motherboard standoffs. As I tried to move it, it seems to have made it out of some horribly hard metal which just, uh, well, cracked in two. Oh well, guess we can do without one. And here goes the new stuff. All right, and there we go. I think this thing should power up now, and I think it's got the correct Intel drivers to just pretty much boot straight up. So let's find out. All right, here goes. Oh, powered correct polarity, and we do got power. So let's see if it's going to boot up or if we're going to get the inaccessible boot device issue. Hey, there we go. Excellent. Who said migrating hardware had to be difficult? This is the first time in a very long while that this thing's had any actual uh, user interaction directly. Everything's been going over the network. And it's going to take a while to install all the drivers. <laughs> we still don't have USB. All right, I think we're going. Yes, indeed. And yeah, that, that's my old fan control program. That's not going to work because we don't have an IT8718F anymore. So, probably want to remove that. Uh, we'll restart later. And that is a bit of an improvement, isn't it? A logical course. Ah, oh, beauty. Blessing for the eyes. Ah, thanks to Windows Software Raid, we even have all our stuff right here. Don't even have to recreate my array. Ah, wonderful. And I do believe that's it. I've installed a bunch of drivers for the networking stuff and for the uh, graphics adapter, so now we can enjoy the full force of a Lynx EM4 graphics adapter. Check out that raw performance. <laughs> uh, but now... I think we're ready to run another instance of performance test to see exactly how much of an improvement we've made. Any bets? Ah, the power consumption? Well, that seems to be damn near close to identical to the other server hardware, actually. And the score now is 8,239, which is actually a bit less than I'd like to see. Uh, most of these processors seem to be getting in the range of 9,400, but I'm willing to wager that most of that score loss has to do with the fact that I'm running only single channel DDR, because that kills a lot of performance in a couple of these tests. So yeah, I'm going to look past that and uh, just set this thing up for video rendering, which is what it's supposed to be doing, and we'll go by that, because I think the performance of that is going to be uh, well, quite far superior to any other computer in the house, by a fair margin too. Alright, so I now installed Sony Vegas and imported my render templates and opened up a project, so let's click the button. Now this is still going to be quite slow since I'm just doing CPU rendering, but uh, uh, for a what's this, 10 minute video, uh, my old rendering machine and old laptop would uh, usually take five-ish hours to render. And before I forget, the idle power consumption of this machine has actually dropped to 30 watts and that's with the integrated graphics adapter enabled. So even though we've more than quadrupled our processing power, we've still decreased our power consumption. So yes, that's not an ode to modern technology, I don't know what is. And that is including 
an internal case light because we've got a USB port in there. For I have seen the holy light. All right, some time has now passed and I've completed a test render on both the new server and my old rendering machine. And I would say that the results are even better than I dared expect. So to the left, you can see the server in pink finishing the render in one hour, 51 minutes and 35 seconds. And to the right in beige brown is the old render machine. And anyone want to wager the time? Well, here it goes. 9 hours, 12 minutes and 14 seconds. So we're looking at an improvement of pretty much 5 times. And 9 hours to 2 hours, that's the difference between publishing a video tomorrow and publishing a video today. And that is such a welcome improvement around here. So with the actual computer hardware upgrades all out of the way, there's only one thing remaining before I can put this thing back together. And that is installing a couple of capacitors into this thing. Uh, because I've actually had a couple of issues when I uh, turn the lights on and off of the computer actually resetting. And uh, that is not a very desirable feature in a server. So I'm just going to shove a couple of these uh, 470 microfarad 16 volt caps on the 5 and 12 volt outputs. And I'm 90% certain that can resolve the issue. And there we go. Well, that I think we're getting pretty damn close to being ready to reassemble this machine because software-wise everything works. I didn't even have to reconfigure anything aside from installers and drivers. And the hardware seems to be working A-OK. -okay. However, because I'm pedantic and I have noticed that uh, the drive on this new CPU cooler fan isn't quite as quiet as it could be, I'm going to take and put a dab of this uh, very heavy asphalt-like substance, just a, a car same proofing stuff on the actual frame of a CPU cooler fan just to give it a bit more mass and prevent it from making that horrible digga 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 style cheap fan noise. Ah, oh, there we go. One resonance killed the CPU fan. Alright, so it's all back together now, so let's flick the switch and see if all that, all those socks actually make a difference. Now sadly I think this motherboard revs the CPU fan at a 10,000 RPM to boot up, so it's not going to be that quiet sensation of just no sound, but I'll give it a go. And there we go. All new hardware and it's looking and sounding exactly the way it used to. And sitting right where it should. Hmm. I did take the... Uh, make the effort of making a little breakout box. Uh, this is just two three-phase uh, 1.6 amp uh, motor protections which I zip-tied together just to break out the connectors on the back and provide 
uh, inherent fusing. So these are going to break if any peripheral I connect up to that draws more than 1.6 amps or so. And as you saw, I'm pairing some Christmas lights on the ceiling. I've been doing that for quite some time. Puts about seven lux in the workshop at all times. Very useful when you're stumbling around trying to get somewhere and can't be bothered turning on the lights. And it's also running my heating fans up there because uh, the, this workshop isn't intended to be heated, it's just uh, floor heating for the upper floor uh, which I'm just seeping some some degree Celsius out of. And if you're wondering what the thing beside it is, that's just my backup computer and yes it's got the admin password written on it but that's because it's on for roughly five minutes every day and it doesn't have internet access so feel free to attempt hacking into it, I dare you. Ah. Oh yeah, that is finally getting the new render server up and running, which is going to be resulting in some some quite less painful long render times on my part. So, thank you for watching. Cheerio.